All right, so welcome to Foundations of Math 20. This is our first lesson in Chapter 1. We are going to be talking about inductive reasoning and making conjectures. So I put this little picture up here. It's not in your textbook. If you want to take a look at this picture here, um, what's the situation here? What, is this, what does this appear to be? A car crash, okay? So a, a car crash has happened, and if you notice here, we have a police officer, and he's taking some measurements. There's some uh, lines that have been uh, either painted or, or dropped down on the road there. There's some cones. There's different markers of skid marks and stuff like that. Obviously, there's debris. We see two vehicles involved. And so what happens is, obviously, these police officers have to come after the fact, and they have to try to put together what happened, right? So they take a look at all of the uh, details, all, they make their observations, and they try and get, okay, they have this observation, and they pull this observation out, they take this measurement, and then they put it all together, and they try and come up with, you know, how did this crash happen, who is at fault, what were the speeds of the cars, which directions were they going, so they kind of come up with an overall sort of a generalization of what happened here. So again, little, little observations combining to a general conclusion. And that overall is right here, inductive reasoning. So that's the first thing we want to look at here is what is inductive reasoning? It's drawing a conclusion, a general conclusion, by observing patterns and identifying properties in specific examples. Now you can, you don't have to copy this down word for word, but um, you want to make some kind of uh, note here on what inductive reasoning is. So drawing a general conclusion by observing patterns or specific examples. That what, that's what I would say would be super important to kind of jot down, make sure you can communicate that with yourself. Okay, that's the reasoning. Now, more, more specific, within this whole area of deductive reasoning, um, there's something called a conjecture. So when we make a conjecture, that is some kind of testable expression so it's a statement or it's a mathematical expression of some sort that is based on available evidence but that is not yet proved. So to come up with a conjecture we use inductive reasoning. So conjecture is a sort of a statement based on available evidence. But it's not a proven um, fact. It's not a proven fact. It's a it basically is an educated guess. Okay? So it's an you can put that down here as well. Educated guess. And let's take a look at our first example here. Now you don't have to copy this out, but I I I would encourage you to take a look at this. And it says this, look carefully at the following figures. So this would be number one, number two, and number three. Use inductive reasoning to make a conjecture about what the next figure would be in the pattern. So again, we are using this type of reasoning, that is inductive reasoning, looking at specific instances or examples, and coming up with a conjecture or an idea about what would be next. Does that make sense? It's reasoning that we use every day, and it's something that we want to highlight here in this, in this first section of math. So go ahead and draw what, the f what you think the fourth figure would look like. Okay? Don't share with anyone. Just try and look at this yourself and guess what you think the fourth figure might look like. And your drawing doesn't have to be perfect, but I'll give you a second to, uh, to do that. Okay, so there should be your fourth figure. Uh, hopefully you, you got that. Now if you came up with something different, you may not be wrong, but I, th I think this is probably the most obvious pattern that we could come up with here. So again, just to highlight, you would look and you say, okay, I see the same general diagram, but we have this section filled out, then we have this section filled out, then we have this one. Based on that evidence, it looks like the quarter regions are the only ones that are shaded, and it looks like they're kind of uh, you know, moving in a clockwise direction. And so it would make sense that you would guess that this would be the fourth figure. And, and you would be right if you did that. Okay? All right. Here's another easy one for you. Um, same sort of idea. Okay? So here, is, here are three diagrams. And I want you to draw the next one.
Okay, so if you had a fourth diagram that looks something like that, I think you would be thinking the same as me. Um, did anyone have a different diagram and you don't think this is correct? Is there a different way of thinking about that? So obviously in, there's, other, there's ways you could look at this, right? Um, let's think about the base of the diagram. The first diagram has one um, dot on the base. The second diagram has two. The third diagram has three. So that's kind of neat that those numbers match up. I don't know if you noticed that, if that's what you thought about. So the, the next one has to have four. And the shape, well, this isn't really a shape, but you can see that this pyramid shape kind of starts to emerge. And so you think, well, the fourth one has to have the pyramid shape as well. Um, you might also uh, see that um, given this one is the base, what we've done is we've added dots um, you know, all along the side, along that slant. You could look at it that way. And so here we go. Now we've added these three up here, and now we've added these four. So there's different ways you can kind of look at that to build what this would be. But does everyone see how we're, we're using some kind of specific examples to determine a general conclusion and to predict? Does everyone see that? Okay, that's inductive reasoning. Making a conjecture is like, okay, what's next? All right? So here's, uh, let, let me just see here. Was there one more I was going to do? I think there was maybe one more I was going to do with you. I don't have it written down. Okay, let's, let's move up here. So what about this one? One. Another easy one, I think. Okay. What are the next three digits in this sequence? So you use your reasoning based on the evidence that you have to predict what would be the next, uh, next three digits. All right, so you might have noticed that these numbers are all what? Squared. They're all <laughs> squares. Yeah, they're all perfect squared. This is one squared, two squared, three squared, four squared. Is that better? And so then the next one should be five squared and six squared and seven squared. Okay? So that's inductive reasoning. Now, with inductive reasoning also, we need to understand, uh, whoops, we need to understand that there are assumptions that we make as well. So in our reasoning, now our reasoning could be faulty because of the, uh, 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 because of the assumptions that we make. Here's one I'm just going to cover real quick. You don't have to copy this down. This example here looks a little confusing, but um, this is a, a sort of a more algebraic uh, in, you know, a reasoning example. So it says, make a conjecture about the shape that is created by joining the midpoints of adjacent sides of any quadrilateral. That's heavy on the language there, but a quadrilateral has four sides. Midpoints are the point on each side that splits that side exactly in half. So you see these are the midpoints. And it says, make a conjecture about uh, when you join the midpoints of adjacent sides that are right next to each other, in this fashion. So what happens? What do you get when you do that? So what you're going to have to do is you might have to do this several times, three, four, five times before a pattern emerges, right? And so there are, there are going to be questions where you're going to have to take different examples and do it. So here's another one and they've joined what would be the midpoints and so on. And so in the process of this equation, what this person, person has come up with is that each time he or she joined the midpoints, a parallelogram was formed. So if you look in these two examples, okay, this side and the opposite side are parallel, no matter what shape you start with. This side, this side, parallel. Same has happened here. Opposite sides are parallel. Here's a perfect uh, rectangle. Opposite sides, parallel. Okay, And so that is something that you may not have initially thought would be the conjecture that you could make, but after you know doing a few examples, then you come up with a pattern. So that's basically what we're doing here in this section. Um, I'll just highlight the uh, in summary terms here now. So the key idea is inductive reasoning involves looking at specific examples, and by observing these patterns and identifying the properties in the examples, you may be able to make a general conclusion which you can state as a conjecture. 
So your general conclusion could be, hey, this is the pattern that I have noticed. A conjecture is based on evidence, and more support for a conjecture strengthens the conjecture, but does not necessarily prove it. Okay? So let's say just one more just random example. Let's say I am observing, I notice that there are a bunch of girls in the classroom across the hall. Only girls, no boys. So I make a guess. I say, oh, there must be, you know, maybe there's, maybe that's just random. But I see two more girls go in. And then I see a group of three more girls come in. Now, I look and I say, well, maybe it's the, uh, you know, grade 11 girls grow group that are meeting. Or maybe it's, uh, you know, the, the girls volleyball team. Or now, you know what I mean? Straight, now, I can't prove that by what I'm seeing. But with, but if the next group goes in, as all girls as well, it might strengthen one of my ideas, okay? So it's not really a proof. We're going to get into proofs later, but more and more examples strengthen what would be your conjecture, okay? So I'll give you your assignments here in a second, and uh, you can get going on on that.